So this is our beautiful male polyphemus moth right here. And he emerged on May 19. So, so far he's doing very good. It's been two days since his emer emergence. And yesterday and today he's been kind of conserving his energy. Yesterday we had to leave the house and we were away from home all day. So he hung on the top of the net and when I came back he was still in the same spot thankfully. And today he had been hanging in the same spot that he was yesterday overnight and into the morning. So that's really good to see. So I used to worry when I saw them just staying in one spot like that all the time. But they're actually trying to conserve energy by doing this. They don't have any functional mouth parts and can't eat, so their lifespan is not really long. And they have to live off of body fat that they saved up in the caterpillar stage. So they have to kind of conserve their energy, so I'm glad to see him doing this rather than flying around and beating himself up because that's what the last male polyphemus moth did, the male polyphemus moth 3, he was very active and by the time I released him his hind wings were all cracked up so I'm glad that I got him to the wall even though it had just thunderstorms and a couple more thunderstorms happened I just got to have got him into the wild and I would like to know more about how these moths cope with thunderstorms like I would just assume that it would be just like butterflies, like getting under a leaf and a big leaf that can shelter them and then staying there riding out the thunderstorm. But then sometimes the wind blows really hard and the rain is just pouring. So I wonder how they do with thunderstorms. I did some research about it on the internet, but I couldn't find anything. So yeah, I don't. I know with butterflies they just get under a leaf, so I would assume it would be the same with them. And they're very beautiful insects. So I don't want to keep them in captivity for too long. And so I'm glad that he's been conserving his energy. To me, his markings look a bit darker than the last male polyphemus moth. Um, like right here, oops, right here, see this line like around the pink part right there? So I think that that part is like a bit more black than it was on the last male polyphemus moth, which is very interesting how their markings can vary from individual to individual and it's really cool. I haven't seen any pictures of it but I heard of some cases where they were totally black or completely white so I searched for some pictures on it but I couldn't find any pictures but just imagining a white polyphemus moth and a black polyphemus moth that must be just really beautiful so anyway let's get him into the wild and then we'll keep going to the park and enjoy this beautiful day. He's a very beautiful and cute little moth and he's really amazing. Just like all the other polyphemus moths. So it's good that we have only three cocoons left. Four of them hatched and only one of them lost a parasite. Oh, he's crawling up my arm. So, um... We lost one cocoon to parasites while we were in the overwintering process and it was the tagnet flies. So the cocoon that we lost to parasites this time in May was also lost to tagnet flies unfortunately. But the good thing is that most of, our, most of the decline in our cocoons, which has led to there being only three of them, is for a good reason. It's because they're starting to come out and be these beautiful moths that are just absolutely stunning. So that's a good thing. Only two of our cocoons lost the parasites and many more of them have actually hatched to be these beautiful insects. So he just took off. Let me catch him before he messes up his wings. And let's get him in the net and let's get ready to release him. Okay everyone, so we are now getting out the car at Brenton Park. There's a beautiful male car in front of the, the tablet probably didn't see it. But now we're 
out at, and we're at the park at Bryson Park. So this is the same park where we found this beautiful male polyphemus moth as a cocoon. And usually I like to um, release them at the same park where I found them as cocoons. Because if I had not found them and brought them into the house, they would have been at this park. But that doesn't always work. Um, the last male polyphemus moth 3, I released him. He was found at another park. But we didn't release him there because um, we weren't able to go there on that day. It was raining before. So yeah, let's go back here away from the crowd and let's get back in the forest and release this beautiful moth. Okay everyone, so this is the beautiful forest and it's just a beautiful, nice, warm spring day. The sun is shining, there are some clouds but it's just nice out there and there's so many good leaves for them to take shelter under. So let's get ready to release our polyphemus moth and hopefully he'll do well out there. I hear the birds singing. It's just a beautiful day to be in the forest. So yeah, and look at this big huge leaf that fell on the ground right here, very big. So the majority of the cocoons that I found this year have been, the majority of the cocoons I found this year have been in oak trees and willow trees. Then I did find one cocoon in this tree, I don't know what type of tree it was, but it had these, it had a big round leaf. And unfortunately that cocoon I'm speaking of is the one that got parasitized by the tagnet flies, but it had this big round leaf and that cocoon is, I don't know what type of tree it was in because the leaf, it was dead, but it was a very big round leaf. It could have been a different type of oak tree. They eat a lot of oak trees, so I don't know, but let's go right here and let's get ready to release our little moth. So I'm going to put the net down right here. And I'm now recording from my camera. And right here you can see these mushrooms that are growing. Okay, so let's get ready to release him and let him be in the wild where he belongs so that he can fly freely and have plenty of room to fly and that he can complete his goal in his short moth life. Okay, there he is. He's such a beautiful moth. Hello, little guy. This is the wild where you need to be. Don't want you to be in captivity. So let's let you be free out here. Here we go. Oh, 
Oh, he's crawling around. Oh. Wow, what a beautiful short first flight in the wild that was, little guy. Wow. I think that flight, like, it wasn't that far because he's a male, so he could fly very far. But he just, that time, he kind of, he was crawling around my hand and he moved without, like, vibrating or anything. So I think that's why it was so short. Wow. Look at that. Now he's vibrating. Just an absolutely beautiful insect. And, man, I just absolutely love um in this short time i'm just going to enjoy this view looking at him a polyphemus moth in its natural environment i love seeing something so beautiful not in captivity or in a tent but in its natural environment in the forest so this is just a beautiful sight watching him vibrate and warm up for flight on the tree outside where he belongs just beautiful look at that those eye spots just a beautiful insect and I'm so glad that that I get to see him in his wild environment oh wow, there's a big huge snail right there so I'll give you a closer look at that when he flies away because I don't want to move the camera to something else and then he flies and I miss it he is vibrating up It's such a treat to get to overwinter these things and watch them emerge from their cocoons and watch them take their first flights in the wild. The sun is shining on his wing. There he goes. Oh, he's climbing higher up the tree. right there. Oh, he's starting to flop. Wow, look at that. What a spectacular sight right there. A giant, big, huge, polyphemus male crawling up the tree. Oh, he just got on the leaf. Well, this release is different than most of the releases of male polyphemus moths I've had. Most of the time, they just take off and then one second and they're bye-bye. But now he is right there and he is closing his wings. Look at that. So now he is closing his wings and he's resting up there on the leaf. So he looks very good and beautiful and perhaps this is the place that he'll be for the night. And maybe he'll stay here all day and then at night he'll take flight and get ready to go on his moth life. And there's some kind of moth, a small moth, flittering around. I don't know, it's kind of flying similar to a skipper, but it's a small little moth. It just landed over there. I think it might be some type of hair streak butterfly. It flew back in the forest. So yeah, there, are, there definitely is a ton of wildlife and... So many things around here that, oh wow, the two little insects are courting. I think that they're hair streak butterflies. There's two of them courting. Oh, and a damselfly. Whoa. Look at that. Right there. Looks like an ebony jewel wing. Wow. Look at that. Wow. My first 2023 ebony jewel wing. Look at that right there. It's a female one. You can tell by those little white spots on the tip of her wings. The males, they don't have that. Wow, look at that. She is fluttering around. The first ebony jewel wing. First 2023 ebony jewel wing. Wow. Wow, she's getting on my finger. Look at that. Oh wow. There goes a butterfly over there. I think it was a female dark morph tiger swallowtail. Wow.
football. So this is just an awesome, totally awesome day to be out in the forest enjoying nature. Look at this ebony jeweling female. She's just resting on my finger and she's very tame right now. I mean, she was just on the leaf and I tried to touch her a few times when she flew away. But now she is just resting on my finger and enjoying that beautiful sunlight. And over there on the tree is our male polyphemus moth. And he's resting. So I think that he's going to stay there for the whole day. And at night he'll take flight and start his life in the wild. Hopefully he'll find a mate and complete his goal in his short moth life and do a good job surviving out here and i'm just loving the wildlife the insects out here today loving hearing the birds singing this beautiful damsel fly on my finger a lot of butterflies of different kinds flying around wow oh wow did you see that i don't know if the camera caught that but when she just took on my finger like she flew down here she literally floated like she glided beautifully so yeah, I just love ebony joins. They're such beautiful damselflies. It's like the way they just float through the air. Wow. Now she's flying around again. That was just awesome to have a close encounter with the ebony jeweling resting on my finger. And she's still here, I'm watching her. Just an absolutely beautiful insect. May 19 was a very beautiful and eventful day with the release of our beautiful male Polyphemus Moth 4 and going out and enjoying the beautiful day at several different parks. We hope that you enjoyed the beautiful day also. Bye everyone, don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit the notification bell. More videos will be coming soon and more Polyphemus Moths will be coming soon also. Bye everyone!